Uh, with my wife Julia. Um, I, I used the word supercharged, but I was looking for a, a word that means uh, something to go faster. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in a hurry to change from conventional through to region 8, so that's why I use the word supercharged. So, as mentioned, uh, we're growing organic avocados, uh, organic seedless lemons, gold cherry fruit, potatoes, beef cattle. Uh, we're starting a new venture, beef and, and sheep on multi-species irrigated pasture, and neutral carbon fermented compost. Uh, I think some people might even call it vacation as well. So, what are we trying to do? Um, that's why you just come up. So, we want to transition to plant available, uh, not water soluble nutrition sources. Uh, we want to significantly increase photosynthetic efficiency in plants. Uh, grow plants that are resistant to pests and diseases, uh, encouraging diverse species of soil biology, explore the upper limits of plant genetic potential, seeking maximum yield and nutrient density. Uh, want to sequester soil carbon, so we're aiming for 5 to 10 tonnes per hectare on dry land and 15 to 20 on irrigated country. Uh, I want to get into data collection using advanced and innovative AI sensing technology and that's, that's the next project for 2021. Uh, I want to become prepared for the introduction of nutrient density testing equipment for produce and I'm going to talk about all these different goals individually now. So yeah, we, we're making uh, this fermented compost. Uh, we're using a Austrian technology, so it's uh, multi-craft probiotics. So you can see one of my workers, uh, Luke, he's actually spraying them on the compost at the moment. Um, so we're also putting a lot of additives into the compost. So we're trying to get the A to Z of the elements from the periodic table in there. And I'll explain a bit why, why we're doing that later. So we've got some mine tailings, uh, crushed rock. Um, so we're also adding uh, fertilisers in. So uh, rock phosphate, superphosphate, um, sulphate of potash, trace elements, uh, gypsum, yeah, everything that we need for that particular crop. This one here is, is for my potato um, production. So we, we, we've part of made it at a certain rate to to um, get a complete nutrient pa uh, package for those plants. So this this particular one we spray those on uh, like late one evening. The, the probiotics uh, next day we come back early in the morning and the heat that was in it compared to the, the night before was just phenomenal. It just it just heated up really fast. So this is this is how we're making it. We've got an excavator, and that's uh, shifting all the all the different uh, inputs and, and, and spreading them out so that they're even. And then we've got a rotary hoe that comes along and does multiple passes. Then the excavator does a bit more mixing and more rotary hoe, spray spray some more of the microbes on. Uh, then we we heat it up into a like an elongated triangle to, to shed the rain and leave it about six, six or eight weeks and then it's ready to go. So this is my sort of pet project now is, is, is the photosynthetic efficiency. Um, it's probably a major input 
that we are currently not measuring. So it, it's the we are measuring with with, with bricks, but, but not much of that is, is happening. Uh, so it, it's the energy that we, we're getting out of the sun and converting that into photosynthate. So it's a photosynthesis, as, as most will know, is a chemical reaction in, in the leaf. Um, so from what I understand, to, to get that from where it is now, they reckon we're up about 20% efficiency with conventional agriculture, and we can probably take it up to over 50 if we get an increase and diverse supply of minerals into the leaf. So this is uh, related to the level of soil biology in, in, in the plant. So if we can get those extra extra chemical reaction happening, we get more sugars going down to the roots, into the biology. The biology then can uh, synthesise more of these nutrients out of the soil. They go up to the leaf, increases again, and the whole, whole thing starts to cycle quicker. So we are also looking to implement uh, some drone sensing technology to measure the photosynthesis efficiency. So we're looking at having a, a drone on standby with uh, camera uh, sensing technology that will take off and land and go and, go and uh, measure the whole, whole paddock rather than just a, a representative sample. And we'll just go and do that automatically. So whenever we, whatever frequency we would like. <coughs> so this is where we sort of um, it comes into to play here. So this is my organic avocados. So we're trying to aim for a compact plant. So with a higher photosynthetic efficiency. We can have a smaller plant, but it's, it's going to have a lot more grain. So we're looking for increased fruit load uh, with reduced pruning. So current, current practices with, with avocados is, is quite a high nitrogen input and seems to make the plant more, more vegetative in nature. So people now are starting to look at pruning after year five because the plant's getting too big. Um, so yeah, it, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm sort of new to the avocado growing, so I'm, I'm sort of coming in without any preconceived sort of ideas. But to, to sort of be pushing the plant with nitrogen, and then a lot of people are putting a, a growth hormone on just to slow it down. So we're sort of putting the put on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. So, so you can see that that's bottom pictures you might better make out. That's the fruit set that I've, I've got this year. So my aim is, is to try and keep as many of those fruit on as possible by, by making that plant healthier. So we're also, with, with that increased photosynthetic efficiency, we're trying to get more complex sugars into the plant and uh, looking for pests and disease resistance and also a high nutrient density in the fruit. So with the, with the pests and disease resistance, it, it's all to do with the bricks level. Um, so that determines whether insects can digest the plant matter. So Insects have a, a simple digestive system and they cannot digest complex sugars, which is the result of high brick levels. So the insects are basically major garbage collectors. So what I'm led to believe is that the insects are, are starting to be excluded from eating the plants at brick eight, and once you get to about 12, they, they are pretty well resistant and, and grasshoppers have the highest tolerance to that. 
So the higher kind of synthetic efficiency is, is, is the key to this. So with the soil biology, uh, we want as many uh, different species um, in the soil as we possibly can. So we're looking for a fungal dominant, so as to facilitate carbon sequestration. So if we have bacterial dominant, like most, most farms are at the moment, um, the, the bacteria will actually burn that, that carbon out, so the plant will put it in, but it just won't stay there, it will just be burnt up by the, by the bacteria. So how, do, how are we going about trying to get a, a fungal dominant soil? So it, it's, the, the main heavy lifter is, is the fermented compost. Um, this stuff's got mushrooms running out of everywhere when it's being made. Um, so we're also putting in uh, nitrogen fixes. So I want to be able to get the nitrogen out of the air, not out of a barrel of oil or, or gas. Um, so yeah, fermented liquid brews, microbial stimulants. So the, the four things that, that these microbes need is, is a food source, gas exchange, shelter and moisture. So we're getting most of that in, in the compost. Um, I've tried a lot of different strategies uh, over the years to try and increase things, but uh, just getting these microbes to survive on soil that's sort of been degraded uh, is not easy, so that, that's why we've gone to compost. So this is on our potato production area. Um, this is uh, Mick here. He's he's applying the powdered inoculants to the to the seed. So we've got uh, mycorrhizal powders or, else, or inoculants, uh, nitrogen fixes. We've got a bit of the rock dust and the mine paving mixed in with that as well. So then it goes into the, the hopper on the back of the planter, gets mixed around and goes in the soil. Uh, then you'll see on the front we've got a, a tank where we've got the liquid inoculants and biostimulants and that gets injected in furrow on top of the seed as it gets planted. So this, this is a new venture. Um, where look, the farm's been uh, previously grown all over the potatoes, so and, and that, that's that severely stripped out the carbon. And uh, so we're looking at a, a multi pronged strategy to rebuild the the carbon levels. So we've got fermented compost for minerals, multi species pasture. Diverse microbe population, fungal dominant, living plants year round, increase the photosynthetic production, and cell grazing livestock. So the picture here is uh, that's that's our multi-species germination. So this is on a, a paddock that's it was in a it's in a pretty poor condition, has been for a number of years, and well, I'm sick of driving past and looking at it. So. We, we ripped it up, feet ripped it, eight cubes of, of compost that was specifically designed for the, for, for the pasture, irrigated pasture, and, and we're going to irrigate that. So that, that's for, for sheep production, that one. So, so this is a, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this one, but, uh, this, this has probably got the potential to be the biggest change to agriculture in history, in, in my opinion. So it's a, it's a spectrometer that uh, these people in America are developing to be able to test the nutrient density in food. So they want to they mass reduce this handheld device for shoppers. So you've got to go into the supermarket, shine at a piece of fruit or veggie, and it will give you a score out of 100 for the nutrient density. So it's not only the NPKs and trace elements, but it's also some of these other healthier things like the omega-3s, the polyphenols, the antioxidants, it will measure all those as well. 
So it's going to be quite interesting when that comes. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's probably going to change the, the quality parameters from cosmetic to nutrition, which is probably where it should be. So their yeah, consumers will be able to pick their produce based on nutritional levels rather than cosmetic. So I'm, I'm getting my farm set up for this farm, so I think uh, I don't really want to be on the wrong side for that one. So yeah, some of the some of the people we're partnering with uh, for plant uh, is, a, is a Israeli company. Uh, so they they've got some soil sensors, uh, fruit dendrometers, which which measure the increase and decrease in, in fruit. Uh, size, so that it's pretty minor uh, increases and decreases they're measuring, and also a trunk dendrometer, which is doing the same thing with, with the trunk measurement. So they, these are all going to be in the same plant, uh, same area. So we're looking for a uh, some sort of synergy here, and so this will give us some information to tell us how much water to put on. Uh, it's also got the capacity to, like an artificial intelligence, that after a period of time it will start to predict what the future water use will be. This is in conjunction with climatic measurements um, and weather stations. So it will it'll, it'll give us an idea on going forward about yeah, how much water we like to use in the next few days. So that, that's, uh, they're coming on, on Monday to start installing that on my farm. These are some uh, new kids on the block. Um, they're, they're pretty keen on, on cranking up a, some drones, as I was discussing before, to, to start uh, getting some data on, on the whole farm. And uh, so they're going to have a multiple, multiple spectral camera on the drone. And it'll be hopefully fully automated, and just as we require, it'll, it'll go and do its thing and get some information on plant health, plant stress, disease detection, growth cycle identification, and even the livestock management. And, and the big one will be the photosynthetic efficiency, which I'm, I'm really keen to start measuring. Uh, also, uh, looking to start measuring soil carbon. And if I can make a few bob out of it, uh, that would be a big help. So carbon sink, um, I think I'll be signing up to their program. Uh, they've got a one-stop shop to measuring carbon and, and getting the credits. So yeah, John Kemp, you probably most of you may have heard, may have heard of him. Uh, in my opinion, he's probably the Albert Einstein of soil and plants. Uh, I think he's cracked the code, and um, he, he's, he's from America, he, he's, his aim is for the whole world to change over to, to uh, regen practices, so he, his website is full of educational material, a lot of podcasts and webinars, um, I've listened to all of them, uh, some three or four times, to try and get my head around them. Some of it's quite complex. Um, he's got a webinar called the Plant Health Pyramid. So yeah, once you've that one, you'll, you'll understand where I'm coming from. And I'm, I'm aiming to be at the peak there, the, on the red. So what's what's the uh, future? I want to actually manufacture a compost tub. So. Um, just to go through my seeding equipment, so the potato planter and uh, the, the seed drill, and uh, get get the this, this compost and all the bits and pieces in it close to the seed, so we can sort of get it get it cranking a bit quicker. So we're we're partnering with, with Nutri Carbon. Um, Nutri Carbon uh, actually will we'll come and. Come and make compost on the farm. So if you, if you need 
uh, some compost and, and you want a, a certain brew, uh, they'll come and make it and then it's all yours and it's on your site. So I'm, I'm looking at making some uh, pellets out of my potato blend, which is just about got everything in that you'd ever need. So if anyone wanted to, to try a few of them, I'll probably want a few, some there. Um, so just, uh, yeah, what, what um, I think some of the problems with this region egg is uh, there's a bit of peer, peer group pressure around people who are sort of adopting it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've told a few other avocado farmers that I'm, I'm going organic and they sort of look at you quite strangely and um, you don't actually know what to say. But, and so I think um, I think you just sort of decide you want to do it and go for it. And I, I'm, I'm wanting to tradition to it as fast as I can, but I don't, I don't want to go break doing it. I don't, I'm not interested in, in going backwards for a few years. I just want to, want to go onwards and upwards. So that's, that's why I've, I've developed this system that will hopefully allow me to do that and do it quick. So um, I, I haven't really got the finances to, uh, to go backwards and, and not make money. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, our story. So I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for your time. Thank you.